Welcome to Mind Shock. This is your host, Bruce McGuire. Long awaited podcast here. When did the action movie die? What has been going on in the world of entertainment in its decline? Like everything seems to be on the decline nowadays. We were going to attempt to pinpoint. In truly mind shock logical fashion, what happened to the action movie star? What happened to action movies in general? As always, if you enjoyed the Mind Shock podcast, wanna help support logic and reason in a world where it is quickly going extinct, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. You can also be a YouTube member right here on YouTube. Help support the channel. That way, make sure you're subscribed, like, and share. Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Patrons do get priority for case topic, logical analysis, code podcast, or requests. You could also be a guest in the podcast. Depending on your tier, questions, comments, theories, thoughts, suggestions, rebuttals, debunkings of any kind, leave them in the comments section. So, what an interesting world we used to live in, entertainment-wise. I mean, a lot of the youngins, they kind of missed out on a truly glorious era. An era of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chuck Norris, Sylvester Stallone, Steven Seagal, and of course, the one and only Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Much has been speculated about who would beat who, which movies are better. But the bottom line is they were all kind of entertaining. They really were. They really were. We got Lord Zed in the house right here with his comment. Now, douchebags like Conor McGregor are seen as tough guys. I actually, okay, I haven't seen the new Roadhouse, first of all. Second of all... I mean, Patrick Swayze was never really an action star in the first place. Although I did like uh, Black Dog. That's one of his underrated movies. It's a trucker movie. It's quite interesting. We need to rewatch that. We got to add that. Man, I got to make note of that. We got to add that to the uh, Q&A watch list. Grunge Truck in the House Here Falling Down was a good one. Yeah, that was a good movie. Not really an uh, action star per se. We are addressing here the action movie as a genre itself. Not necessarily dramatic action movies. I mean, Heat was good, Falling Down. I mean, there's, you know, even at Roadhouse. I like Roadhouse. They're not really like popcorn action movies. I mean, we're talking one-liners, explosions left and right, fight scenes all over the place. I mean, truly larger-than-life movie stars. I mean, I'm going to go into the reasons on the decline and just the cesspool of soy that we have nowadays. I mean, look at the action stars today. I mean, we got these soy goofs, these metrosexuals, these cross-dressing goofs. I mean... Who do we have today? Obviously, superhero movies. I don't want to blame comic book superhero movies for the decline of Hollywood. I'm not even putting Jake Paul on the list, my friend Lord said. Does he did he even do any real movies? But I mean, look at this look at the soy cesspool we have today. I mean, really, the best that today can muster is probably something like Jason Statham. And he's not really a traditional action star. He's not that jacked. He's not really larger than life. He's got like a suave British thing going on. I mean, he's decent. He really is decent. He's decent. Death Race 2000, I think, was probably one of his best. And, of course, the Transporter movies. But he was always a poor man's 80s star. Like, he would never hack it in the 80s and 90s heyday. He would never hack it. So, again, let's examine who we have here today. We have Chris Evans. Because, again, as I was saying with the superhero movies, there was a Captain America made. Was that? What year was that? Let me, let me double check the year. I, I, I might be one of the only people who actually enjoyed the first Captain America movie. 1990, actually. Okay, so I don't know if it was shot in 89. Matt Salinger, no clue who he is. 
But there were, they, there were, I mean, the Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. I didn't put Dolph Lundgren on the list. I mean, he definitely belongs on the list of, you know, he's a larger-than-life action star. I mean, he was always, you know, B-League, but he was still pretty solid. I mean, Dolph Lundgren literally is eons ahead of any of, any of these soy goofs here. I mean, come on. We got Chris Evans as Captain America. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, does this guy look like an action star? I mean, yeah, I know some of these guys pack on some muscle here and there, like uh, Chris Hemsworth, and obviously John Cena's uh, juice to the gills. But, I mean, the guy's a goof. I mean, John Cena's first Hollywood run was actually better. The Marine. I mean, it was more true to the 80s and 90s. They weren't great, but they, they had some value, and he wasn't cross-dressing. I mean, there was some kind of legitimacy. Oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Well, Clint Eastwood kind of predated the 80s and 90s. I mean, Clint Eastwood was like one of the OG OGs, like John Wayne and Clint Eastwood. Lord Zed bringing out Sasha Mitchell. Wow. Yeah, I'll put the other graphic up uh, after we go over this new generation of goofs. Sasha Mitchell. He would actually have probably been the equivalent of a Statham. He really wasn't jacked at all, but the guy did have charisma. I know some people might not like him. He did all the Kickboxer sequels. Kickboxer 2, Kickboxer 3, Kickboxer 4, The Aggressor, one of my favorites. That actually had one of the best bar fights ever. Yes, I've seen them all. And Kickboxer 5, Redemption with Mark DeCascos. I actually left him off the list as well. Uh, obviously, the uh, heyday. I'll put the graphic up right here. I mean, you know, the, the Mount Rushmore guys. I know, you know, there's more, but... Yeah, you got Arnold Stallone, Norris Seagal, and, of course, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Bruce Willis... Uh, Bruce Willis didn't, couldn't really do the fight scenes as well. I mean, he was kind of the... You know, he did have, you know, he, he, he did some action. I mean, Die Hard. But, I mean, other than Die Hard, what did he really have? There was that movie Die Hard on a Boat. What was that? I'm sure somebody knows the name of it in the chat. What was Die Hard on a Boat? That was, I believe that was 80s. That was before Die Hard. I think that came out before Die Hard. Oh, Last Boy Scout was really good, too, though. But, I mean, that's about it. I mean, I wouldn't put Bruce Willis on the Mount Rushmore. I mean, Bruce Willis is no Arnold. He's no Stallone, he's no Norris, he's no Seagal, he's no Van Damme. Oh, Charles Bronson, one of the OGs for sure. Yeah, I mean, if this is mostly about, you know, the heyday and then the death. Um, maybe we'll do a different podcast on the OGs, because definitely Bronson, Eastwood, John Wayne, a lot of those older guys, I mean, they were class. Talk about having class. I mean, these guys on the screen, the 80s and 90s guys, had class, too. Lord Zed said we're missing another 90s guys. Oh, are we? Who else was? Oh, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren was the other. He was kind of big. And Brandon Lee. But Brandon Lee didn't do a lot. But Brandon Lee was also kind of more like a Statham. He wasn't this jacked, larger-than-life guy. Oh, McQueen. Yeah, I mean, definitely in the OG era. We're not going to get into the... Yeah, there's a lot of awesome OG guys that kind of started the action movie. But we're talking about the heyday and then the decline, and we're going to actually try to pinpoint the exact movie. I had one in mind, and I just completely forgot what it was. I totally forgot. I actually had it in mind yesterday when I was planning this podcast because we've been talking action movies for a while and I've, and I've been wanting to, to do this pinpointing. I Am Ion's Cat says, Was the action movie intentionally stopped or prevented to eliminate the action movie conspiracy? Yes, I Am Ion's Cat. You, you might have been joking, but I'm not joking here. This was definitely a rolled-out intentional Illuminati conspiracy to suppress morale of men and boys and to replace them with this cesspool of soy, these metrosexual cross-dressing goofs that not only lack charisma... I mean, Kiana's really cool. Keanu Reeves is cool. I mean, he had Point Break, but... Point Break is not a major action movie. It's, it's a drama action movie. Oh, Wesley Snipes. We forgot Snipes. I don't think he did that much in the 80s, though. 
Snipes was an awesome 90s guy. And Michael Jai White was, was decent. A lot of his I mean, he was cool. A lot of his movies just weren't that good, though. But going back to what I was saying about the comic book movies, they weren't ruined. Like, you had, I, I think Blade with Snipes in 98 was probably the best comic book movie ever in terms of balancing everything and being highly entertaining without over-the-top CGI or any of that nonsense. It had the charisma, the story, the flash, the pizzazz, and even class and humor, everything extremely well-balanced. And now you got all these goofs. Yeah, I am Ayn's cat. Yeah, we're not joking. Like, it's been an intentional replacement here. I mean, just the suppressing of testosterone and masculinity. I mean, that's not accidental in, you know, Holly Weird. If you haven't checked out the Mel Gibson interview, I mean, Holly Weird has been, uh, I, I actually postulated the theory that Hollywood is the whore of Babylon itself, exporting degeneracy the world over. But let's look, who, who do young boys have to look up to now in the movies? Like, Kiana is cool. He's cool. The Matrix was pretty cool. But he's just not a real, I mean, call me crazy. Call me blaspheming. But, you know, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, I mean, that's just not a platform for action movie stardom. I mean, look, you could argue that, uh, you know, Arnold's debut, Hercules in New York, isn't exactly a platform. But it kind of is. I mean, he's literally playing Jack Hercules. It's just got a humorous vibe to it. It's still completely larger than life. So the, I don't think this comic book superhero movie destroyed everything. I mean, I enjoy the original Batman as well. Yeah, I mean, but John Wick, I mean, just in terms of today, in terms of post-2000s all the way into 2024... I mean, Keanu Reeves is legit one of the top action guys today just for the John Wick franchise alone. And I didn't include Tom Cruise simply because... Oh, man, the Tom Cruise enigma. Tom Cruise is an action star. He really is. He didn't start off one. He's really short. He doesn't have that larger-than-life thing in real life going on. That's actually, yeah, Obreek, of course Obreek has to say it. Keanu Reeves' character Neo's passport in the Matrix expires September the 11th, 2001. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, we can't include Michael Keaton because he's a dramatic actor and he's bland and wooden and dry, kind of like Kevin Costner. Even though I do enjoy Waterworld. Maybe I'm one of the few, but I thought Waterworld was a highly entertaining movie. And one of Costner's best, The Dances with Wolves, of course, too. I actually enjoy Costner's baseball movies as well. Perfect Game is one of my favorite movies. So, yeah, but I wouldn't put him in there. And then Harrison Ford, Russell Crowe, they are not action movie stars. They're dramatic. They've done some great dramatic action movies. Of course, Gladiator's up there. I mean, you could you could possibly put Mel Gibson in there, but I can't because he's not that he's not larger than life. These are dramatic actors that have made phenomenal dramatic action films, but they weren't. Were, I'm talking just like you know the popcorn action movie. The high octane explosions around every corner. Although Le the Lethal Weapon franchise kind of meets that criteria, but that's pretty much the only th the only series of Gibsons that really meets the action movie criteria is the Lethal Weapon series. I don't know if that's enough to put him in there. I mean, because he is on P and Mad Max sorta. I mean, actually, you know who else was kind of could have made it big if he wanted to? Tom Hardy. Because he had the charisma, but he was too busy playing bad guys and doing all these dramatic, you know, some dramatic indie movies. Ransom's not really an action movie. It's a great movie. Great, great dramatic movie. So look, look at this cesspool of soy we have today. You have Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Yeah, the wisecracking might be funny. But, I mean, he looks like Kristen Stewart half the time in his dramatic movies. I don't know, some kind, he's doing some kind of homo movies. I don't know. Not exactly an action star. I mean, and small in stature. Will Smith's not an action star. He did. He also did some dramatic action movies that were good. But you can't really take... Actually, you know what? My favorite role of Will Smith, probably in an action movie, is Suicide Squad. He was pretty damn good at entertaining in that. 
Yeah, Independence Day is awesome. That's a sci-fi movie, though. That's sci-fi. I mean, it was kind of popcorn action, but he does, there's really not that many fight scenes. Yeah, Independence Day does indeed rule. <laughs> I mean, that movie was fantastic. Okay, so hold on. Let's go over the cesspool of soy we have here replacing, you know, the, the action movie stars of yesteryear, of the 80s and 90s. So Hemsworth is probably the closest to being, to be able to achieve larger than life status because he does get pretty jacked for Thor and Extraction. If you haven't checked out the Extraction movies, they're fairly good. Actually, I just remembered which movie ended the entire, I, yes, I have it. Man, I'm back. <laughs> I haven't, yeah, I've been working on a pretty, pretty extended schedule. So I've, my memory has been slightly less sharp than usual. I just remembered it. I won't forget it. We'll get to it in a few minutes after I do my overview. And I'm not sure anybody's going to be able... Oh, wow. Lord Zed. Lord Zed, I am so glad you're here. Because you you are exactly on the same page with me. Jason Momoa had all of the making. Sit bullet in the head was legit one of the best modern action movies I had ever seen. Uh, let's see, what year is that? I was so stoked for it because uh, I was thinking, I was thinking the action movies back. You got you got Stallone. That was 2012. You got Stallone passing the torch to Jason Momoa of Baywatch Hawaii. So this scrawny kid from Baywatch Hawaii, out of nowhere, because I hadn't seen him. Yeah, bullet to the head. We got to add that to the Q and A watch list. It, it's phenom. It's so phenomenal. It's better than it has any right to be. And it totally shot. I was not expect because that really was a good throwback action movie. Because I can't remember a good action movie post two thousand. And then Bullet in the Head comes out with Stallone passing the torch to Jason Momoa, this toothpick kid off Baywatch Hawaii. I think he was what seventeen or eighteen or nineteen years old in that series. You would have never thought he would have. So I hadn't seen him since Baywatch Hawaii. So that was ninety. Nine, I don't know. What was Baywatch Hawaii? <laughs> 99, 2000, whatever it was. Then fast forward over a decade, and this, this guy comes out jacked with charisma from the gills, oozing charisma from the gills, co-starring with Stallone, and I'm thinking, okay, the action movie's back. And then the only other thing Momoa really did was the Conan remake, which I actually liked. I might have been one of the only ones. And actually, did Conan come out even before that? I might have watched it after. Let's look at Momoa's filmography. I mean, Momoa's probably the biggest wasted talent because he really he really did have the ability. Because even the, the Aquaman movies, I mean, I'm not a fan of them. I mean, they weren't horrible, but... Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I wouldn't qualify that uh, those as great action movies. You know, all that woke Disney nonsense now. But I don't think, he just kind of squandered everything. He also did the TV series Red Road. I don't know if you've, you saw that, uh, Lord Zed. That was actually really good. And that did not get, I think it was two seasons, two super short seasons, and it didn't get renewed. That was fairly good. But let's see here. He did The Last Manhunt 2022. I haven't seen that. Oh, he actually did do another good movie. Let's see. It was... I saw Brave and that wasn't great. Was it Sh Sugar? Road to Paloma. Road to Paloma. He was pretty cool in. He had some good uh, anti-hero vibes going on there. Yeah, Conan the Barbarian remake, he actually did that before Bullet in the Head, but I didn't, I didn't watch it until after I saw Bullet to the Head. When I saw Bullet to the Head, and, I mean, that just set the stage. He really didn't do much after that. He did Wolves and Debug. I haven't seen Debug. That looks kind of dumb. I don't think he even stars in that. Hackers in a Spaceship. Eh, meh. Oh, you know who we forgot? Gary Daniels. Gary Daniels was kind of a powerhouse in the 90s. Low-budget powerhouse. Yeah, I mentioned Brandon Lee earlier, but Brandon Lee wasn't really larger than life. I mean, he had a ton of charisma, phenomenal actor, 
And he just didn't do enough movies. But yeah, I mean, he would be second tier. Yeah, P Road to Paloma is actually really good, Lord said. Especially if you like Momoa. But he basically squandered everything to do Aquaman and some of these other random movies and small parts. Because he did have that, he kind of has that larger than life thing going on. Like the, uh, like the 80s and 90s guys. Like he probably was the closest to do it. I mean, you real. I'm glad you brought him up because he totally slipped my mind. Like bullet in the head was just that was just damn good. I mean, that was was that even Hollywood? Yeah, I guess that was Hollywood. That was a Stallone movie. It, it kind of almost felt like a high budget indie and not Hollywood. But yeah, Momoa was probably the closest to be able to capture the glory of the 80s and 90s high octane. You know, high testosterone level. Because look at look at look at goofs like John Cena. Again, in his first run in Hollywood with movies like The Marine and some of those. I mean, he was very bland and dry. I mean, I I suppose it's not too late. He's not that old. But if he keeps doing Aquaman movies, I mean, you know, that just doesn't cut it. All that woke Disney nonsense just does not cut it. So, we have Chris Evans as, as Captain America. What else has Chris Evans done? Nobody even remembers Chris Evans. Was he in not another teen movie? I don't remember. He's kind of scrawny. I mean, he bulks up to do the Captain America movies, but that's about it. Then you have Hemsworth, who gets kind of close, but Momoa would actually be a much better pick. Because he's got way... Momoa's got way more charisma than Hemsworth. Hemsworth is pretty dry. I mean, where's the charisma? Now, now, Kiana has some decent charisma, but it's kind of fine-tuned to the role. Like, he's, he's not going to be able to pull off roles like Arnold, Stallone, Van Damme, Seagal. Like, he's very niche in what he can and can't pull off. Like, John Wick almost feels tailor-made to him in what he can pull off. It's also not, I mean, obviously, they kind of jump the shark. I might do a John Wick analysis because I've watched all of them. And the first one is very solid. The second one's pretty solid. And the third and fourth really fall off into almost parodies of themselves. And I think that was a huge mistake because it really took you, even though this is like alternate universe, whatever, it really takes you out when they just completely wreck the physics and biology of everything, where Wick can just fall off a building and survive no problem. Whereas in the first two movies, it... It was within the scope of the willing suspension of disbelief. I mean, yeah, because some people can get hit by a car and get up depending on the speed and the angle, etc. But, you know, f falling off multiple story building and just jogging off, that doesn't quite work. I mean, you could, they could have at least had him fall into a dumpster. I mean, come on. So, Kiana, I mean, look at him. He's this scrawny, skinny guy. You got The Rock, who's semi-jacked, but The Rock is such a goof. Now, Lord Zed probably remembers this because Arnold actually had a cameo in uh, The Rock's first big action movie, The Rundown. I don't know, it was 2000 or 2001 or 2002, somewhere around there. Or 2003, maybe, actually. Eh, let me get the date right. Yeah, 2003. <laughs> well, he's also co-starring with Sean William Scott. He's co-starring with Stifler. So, you know, what can you do there? There's only so much you can do there. But that was supposed to be The Rock's big action movie breakthrough and Arnold passing him the torch. And The Rock squandered everything, putting on tutus, doing these nonsensical Illuminati Hollywood, Hollywood propaganda films. And, and mostly just, you know, degenerate nonsense. And John Cena followed suit. John Cena followed suit. Oh, Walking Tall was decent, actually. I liked Walking Tall 06. Is that 06 or 07? Let's see, what was that? I liked Walking Tall. He actually, I liked that a lot more than The Rundown. The rundown was pretty terrible. And then you had the Antichrist, Christopher Walken, in the rundown as well. Yeah, let's see. If he followed that up with Walken Talk, he was still kind of doing wrestling, at least part-time at the time, I thought. 
snitch was horrible. Oh man, I wish I never watched that. Pain and Gain with Wahlberg was actually decent. But that's about it. Faster was pretty bland. The other guys was crap. Gridiron Gang was actually a decent football drama. I remember that one too. That was 06. Walking Tall was 04. So he actually... Walking Tall was right after the rundown. Yeah, I, that wasn't bad. If he kind of stuck to that kind of blueprint, he could have been decent as well. He could have been decent. You know, he had a fair amount of entertainment value. Yeah, Pain and Gain was probably his best acting performance. <laughs> yeah, Gridiron Gang was a fun, you know, sports drama. But anyway, so who else we got here? You got Jason Statham, which is probably the closest well-rounded guy. Because unlike Momoa, Statham did the mechanic movies, the transporter movies. I mean, he did a couple of half-decent flicks. He did, I think, War with Jet Li. He was also in The One with Jet Li. I mean, he had a good, you know, Death Race 2000. He had a good thing going. Statham was probably the closest to achieving 80s, 90s action star status. But he wasn't larger than life in real life. So there's two, there, there are basically two criteria here that I believe killed the action movie. Other than the Illuminati conspiracy, of course. <laughs> because I, I believe that it could have, the action movie could have continued for longer than it did. And I mean, there was a lot of factors here too, because Stallone was basically got no roles. What was the Stallone? Avenging Angelo, I believe was the one that did so bad, Stallone wasn't getting any roles after that, or at least no good roles, until he came out with Rocky Balboa. And he kind of talks about that on his, on his new documentary, on how hard it was to get that made, Rocky Balboa 2006, and that's probably... Uh, that, I think that's Stallone's favorite Rocky movie. I think I have to agree. I'm also one of the... I guess I'm one of the only people who also liked Rocky V. I wish we would get a director's cut of Rocky V. Oscar. You know what? I think I've... I haven't really seen Oscar. I, I, I saw it when it was on TV in little snippets. I wasn't paying attention. It looked like trash. It just did not look like a Stallone movie. But I like Lock... Lock Up was awesome. That was one of the first Stallone movies I saw. I probably saw that before I saw Rocky, actually. Lockup used to be on TV all the time. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, Stallone's got a, a, a great resume. Stallone and Arnold have fun. Arnold's resume actually isn't as good as Stallone's. He just didn't do as many movies as you would think. Like, Stallone did a ton of movies. Arnold actually didn't make that many. I mean, he made, he made some good ones. I mean, Junior was obviously his... I mean, that was terrible. <laughs> but, I mean, that was the beginning of the end for Arnold. And then The Sixth Day might have been his last really big movie. But I did enjoy his comeback movie. I'm trying to remember the name of it. where The Corrupt Cop movie. And also The es Escape Plan was pretty cool, too, with Stallone. But it just, it couldn't recapture the glory, and I'll, I'll explain why. I mean, Arnold had maybe 10 solid movies, where, where Stallone probably had closer to 15. And still going strong. Although I guess since Steven, since Stone Cold Steve Austin broke his neck in the first Expendables, he's kind of mostly slowed down. Tulsa King's not bad. I mean, I thought it was going to be horrible, but it's it's half decent. It's half decent. It's watchable. Yeah, Arnold's comeback movie sabotage in 2014 he actually made that after 2013 and then he also did last stand 2013 which was pretty meh but he actually you know what it was collateral damage was really his last 
Man, Terminator 3 came out after Collateral Damage. I saw Collateral Damage in the theater. For some reason, I thought Terminator 3 came out before Collateral Damage. Yeah, so I guess Terminator 3 was really his last real action movie for Collateral Damage. Non-Terminator movie. Yeah, Terminator 3 was good, too. Am I the only person that likes Terminator 3? <laughs> Lord Zed, you mean Tulsa King? Oh yeah, mobster, not monster, yeah. I also saw Stallone's uh, superhero movie, which I thought was phenomenal. If you like dark superhero movies. Let me see what the name of it was. I totally forgot the name. <laughs> I just watched that on a whim right around the time it came out. And it was... Uh, Oh, we have to mention the worst movie of all time. That's Stallone's star. Samaritan in 2022. Yes, Stallone also did Backtrace. Do not watch that movie. It looks like some super low-budget garbage. I have no idea. Like, I don't know if, if st someone was extorting or blackmailing Stallone and forced him to star in that movie. Backtrace 2018. I mean, that was just complete and utter filth. I mean, that was just trash. Then he follows it up with Rambo Last Blood, which is phenomenal. <laughs> so, yeah. Do not watch Backtrace. Yeah, I like Terminator 3 as well. Okay, so these are the new guys. So, are we ready? So, let me do a poll of what everybody thinks was the transition to the death of the action movie. Actually, <laughs> that's weird. It only gives me a few options, so we can't can't really let's do a year well i can't do year either it wants me to do yes or no unfortunately huh okay so i want everybody in the chat to give their pick of either the year the action movie died or what was the last action movie? The last real action movie. And no, I'm not suggesting it was Last Action Hero. With Arnold Schwarzenegger with a cameo from Jean-Claude Van Damme in the red carpet scene. Did everybody catch Van Damme in Last Action Hero? I mean, they squandered a lot of opportunities in the 80s and 90s. I think Arnold and Stallone were going to work together on something late 80s, early 90s. Stallone was also going to work with Cynthia Rothrock, one of the uh, best female action stars. Early 90s, she was all over the place. Late 80s, early 90s, Hong Kong to Hollywood. They, she was actually going to do a movie with Stallone. Unfortunately, it never got made. Nobody has any picks. Wow, I thought more people would uh, would get some some uh, some picks here. What is the last great action movie after which no action movie could recapture the glory of the heyday of Hollywood action, which was the eighties and nineties? What was the last one? Nobody, nobody has any picks at all. That's quite mind shocking. I find this mind shocking. Obreak picks Independence Day. 
I'm not gonna even call that's not a traditional action movie. That's an alien invasion movie, probably the best one, but it's I wouldn't call it a traditional eighties, nineties popcorn style. Like we're talking the you know, an Arnold Stallone Van Damme Seagal type movie. It came out in 96. So you don't think there was a single awesome action movie post-96? I'm not arguing with you. I'm just asking. I have not seen Bangkok Dangerous. I heard it was pretty good, though. You're talking about the remake or the original? We're not going to get into Asian cinema for the purpose of this podcast. This is about Hollywood action movies. I will be doing quite a few podcasts on uh, Asian action movies. Oh, Nick Cage was in the remake. Yeah, Chow Yun Fat was pretty legit, and his Hollywood run was also underrated. I think The Corrupter was one of Wahlberg's first starring roles. I wouldn't put Wahlberg as an action star either. All right, so so we got nothing here. Where is everybody? Nobody got notifications, probably. <laughs> what was the last great action movie? Exit Wounds with Seagal. That was probably the the last great Seagal movie. Some people don't think it was great, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed Exit Wounds. I think it's an underrated movie, and the comedy is just really on point in Exit Wounds. So that was 2001, and no, that is not my pick for the last great action movie. I mean, if we're going to count Jet Li's uh, Hollywood run... Romeo Must Die is another film that gets a lot of hate, but I thought it was quite good. <laughs> I thought it was cool. And we don't need to get into the uh, Aaliyah Illuminati conspiracies. Alright, come on guys. Nobody, Nobody's active in the chat here. What's going on? What's going on? Exit Wounds was 2001. The Matrix was 99. I mean, that... I mean, that was kind of, I mean, Matrix is, is just... Uh, I mean, this is... Uh, it, it is genre-bending. I mean, you got, you got all-out action, sci-fi, revolutionary CGI, you know, the philosophical meta aspects. You know, it's got everything. That's 99. Come on, what does everybody think was the last great popcorn action movie? Kiss the Sky says Steve Austin. <laughs> Steve Austin movies are kind of funny. I don't know if anybody's checked out some of Steve Austin's movies. They're really low budget and crappy, but they're kind of fun to watch. I haven't seen that many. I saw a couple, and uh, I I was not a fan of Steve Austin, the pro wrestler. I mean, he was just so classless, and that was his character, but whatever. Just this beer-guzzling goof who, who, who somehow gets the upper hand on all these physical specimens. I just thought it was just dumb. His whole gimmick was dumb. I'm going to catch some uh, blaspheming hate for that, but <laughs> I also wasn't a fan of The Rock. <laughs> Give me some of the classier pro wrestlers like Bret the Hitman Hart. I, I wasn't really that big of a fan of the Hulkster either, but he had a certain amount of class as the character, not talking about in real life. Yeah, Obreek, I'm talking about, you know, a popcorn action movie in the same vein as the 80s and 90s, the larger-than-life action movie. I mean, you can pick Terminator 3. I mean, you could pick whatever. Whatever, whoever. 
I mean, it could be a female lead. I mean, I don't know. There were, there were. I guess Cynthia Rothra. I mean, we're talking B leagues, but C Cynthia Rothra had some pretty solid movies as well. Not really into the late '90s though. I think you know she kind of had some of her best stuff probably early '90s. What do we got? What do we got? Nobody, nobody cited a single movie here. I mean, this is disappointing. I expected more from you, Mind Shock listeners. Come on, Lord Zed. You, you seem to know your action movies. Do, can you pick a single movie where after this movie, there was just literally nothing that held up? Because we can't really say bullet to the head because technically the action movie was dead for so many years. And then bullet to the head was like, Kind of like some kind of comeback for the action movie, but it was already dead. So we're looking at which movie killed. I will give my pick for what movie killed it. I have one very specific pick for what killed the action movie. I'm going to give it in a moment. So Stallone, what was Stallone's last great action movie? Well, let's find Stallone and Arnold. I mean, The Sixth Day was kind of crappy. I mean, it was okay. I wouldn't call it the last great action movie. So let's see what Stallone's... I mean, Avenging Angelo was kind of weak. I mean, I liked it, but I wouldn't call it a great action movie. And then The Expendables was kind of his old school revival. And it's kind of like, a, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't call that either, the, you know, a great action movie. And The Last Expendables was just pure trash. I mean, it was borderline unwatchable. I did enjoy the first three, though. Okay, so let's see what Stallone's last great movie was when he was on a roll. So he had Assassin's 95, solid. Daylight 96, solid. Copland 97, more on the dramatic side. More on the dramatic side. I would not call that an action movie. It's also one of his best performances. And then he did it. He did Ants with a Z in 98. He did Get Carter in 2000, which was not great. Driven 2001, racing movie, not great. I See You 2002, I really liked that, but a great action movie it was not. It was a good drama, drama whodunit. Avenging Angelo also, I liked it, but not a great action movie 2002. I mean, he's pretty much done at that point until Rocky Balboa 2006. So we probably have to go... I mean, even Daylight wasn't a... Tra I w it was more of a survivalist. I mean, there's not tons of explosions and shootouts. So we might have to go all the way back to Assassins 1995. The Specialist 94 liked that. Demolition Man was 93. And then Cliffhanger 93. Cliffhanger was pretty legit. I mean, see, Cliffhanger and Daylight are very different films. I like Daylight. I saw that in the theater as well. I like Daylight. But it's just not this high-octane, incredible movie. Cliffhanger is. Demolition Man is. And a lot of people don't like The Specialist, but I like The Specialist, and I like The Assassins with Antonio Banderas. Now, Antonio, he, I can't really put him on the list either because he's got Desperado. And Assassins. I mean, that's pretty much it. Call, I mean, you know, and he's excellent. He's absolutely excellent. He had a lot of potential, too. He could have done a lot more there, too. The new Rambos are absolutely phenomenal, Lord Zed, if, if you haven't seen them. They are absolutely phenomenal. I like them better than Rambo 3. <laughs> but, again, that's after the gap. He made those after the action movie died. And they they kind of brought it back. I mean, the the yeah, especially the the Rambo from not the most recent one, which I was surprised at how good the most recent one was, but the one before that would have been 2008. I mean, it is absolutely spectacular. I mean, it's definitely I it holds up to, you know, as an 80s and 90s movie. The problem is the action movie already died by that point. So we're not talking about revival movies that are just as good. We're talking about the last great one before it died. 
So we have to pretty much go to Assassins, I would say. Either Assassins or Demolition Man for Stallone, which was 95 or 93. So we can give them the benefit of the doubt with Assassins 95. So that would have been Stallone's last great action film. And it was still kind of espionage, spy movie-like. So, But if we give them the benefit of the doubt, I mean, and the specialist was a little lackluster, too. Whereas Demolition Man, I thought, delivered, which would have been 93. So, but if we give him the benefit of the doubt, we can go Assassin's 95. And now let's look at Arnold's last great action movie. Are we going to say Terminator 3? Some people hated Terminator 3. I don't know. Where are we going to put Arnold? So, if we don't do Terminator 3, which was 2003, collateral damage wasn't good enough. I liked it. It was good. The sixth day wasn't good enough. End of days, he's playing with the horror vibe. I actually like that movie as well. But we, it doesn't pass the muster. Batman and Robin, I'm probably one of the only people that actually liked Arnold's performance as Mr. Freeze in Batman and Robin, but no. That, an action movie, it does not capture the glory of the 80s and 90s. Yeah, Con Air, Con Air checks all the boxes. You are correct, Lord Zed. Connor, Connor, uh, Con Air does check the boxes. Hold on. I mean, it doesn't have to be specifically Stallone or Arnold, so we'll get we'll get to it in a second. Eraser 96. Because, okay, so he had Junior 94. I would say Junior was the beginning of the end of Arnold's career. Because True Lies was 94. We might have to go True Lies for Arnold's last great action. I mean, that had everything. I mean, it even had the Harrier jet. I mean, come on. True Lies is up there, because he followed that up with Junior and then Eraser in 96. I like Eraser as well, but I, it just wasn't as good as, for example, True Lies. We might have to say True Lies was, was Arnold's last great movie. So that puts Arnold 1994 with True Lies Assassins for Stallone in 95. All right, let's do... Uh, Steven Seagal is trickier because the Patriot with Seagal was just pure garbage. I mean, that's borderline unwatchable, and I say this as a huge Seagal fan. <laughs> so let's look. Belly of the Beast in 2003 was actually decent. I don't know if people have seen that one. Half Past... Ticker was the beginning of the end for him in 2001. Exit Wounds 2001. The Patriot was 98. So basically his his three almost three-year hiatus from 98 to 2001 was basically the beginning of the end for Seagal. Ticker was also complete trash. Ticker was 2001, Half Past Dead 2002. So I would say Fire Down Below was... Because he did... I mean, Executive Decision, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen that. He did Under Siege 2 in 95, followed up with Executive Decision and The Glimmer Man in 96. I thought The Glimmer Man holds up as well. I'm going to give him credit. As well as Fire Down Below. I know a lot of people don't like Fire Down Below 97. To me, that was almost as good as the others. So I'm going to put, I would put Seagal, because then The Patriot, he fell off in 98. But then Exit Wounds, I thought was was damn good in 2001. So it's either going to be Fire Down Below 97 or Exit Wounds 2001 for Seagal. Now let's do Jean-Claude. Oh, Heracles in the house here, helping us out. Carla Lindsay in here. Yeah, Linda Hamilton was phenomenal. That is, you know, a female action star done right, unlike all this, you know, woke nonsense nowadays. 
Yeah, Linda Hamilton, I liked her more in the second one, but I mean, her acting, I mean, you know, she played the character well in the first one, too. But Carla says, favorite action movie, Forbidden Kingdom. I mean, that's kind of pure, that's more pure martial arts. We're kind of focused on high octane, big explosion. I mean, martial arts, too, but martial arts is secondary. The third Terminator was actually pretty good. How did Linda ruin it? I actually liked her even in Dark Fate. I thought Dark Fate was pretty underrated. I mean, they really went somewhere with Arnold's character that I thought they wouldn't go, which was interesting. I think, is there a director's cut of the third one? I kind of, I'm, I'm, I might not have seen the theatrical cut of the third one. I might have only seen the director's cut, which is why I like it. Maybe the, maybe the theatrical sucks. I don't know. So, okay. So right now, which we're basically drop in the comments, uh, in the, in the chat, what everyone thinks the last great action movie was. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver was pretty cool too. In the alien movies, action heroines done right obviously modern day hollywood can't do anything right with male or female stars but anyway we have stallone's last great movie i i would pick assassins 95 arnold i would pick true lies 94 and seagal you could either go with fire down below 97 or exit wounds 2001 yeah, the new Heracles, if you just got here, I was just talking about that with Lord Zed. We're pinpointing the death of the action movie because Rambo 2008 revived it after it was already dead. And Rambo was absolutely phenomenal, yes. And the new one was really good, too. So we're not talking about revival of the, you know, we were also talking how Bullet in the Head was really good with uh, Jason Momoa and Stallone, which kind of gave hope. to, to But then they squandered all that hope. But anyway... No rush hour. Wow. Lord Zed wants to count rush hour. You know, I mean, it has the shootouts, the explosions, and the fight scenes, and it is quite a popcorn franchise. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. I would say no, just because it, it leans so much comedy. Like, Commando is hilarious, but it's not a comedy. It's an action movie first. Rush hour was a comedy first. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Rush Hour is comedy action, not action comedy. It, it centered more on the the comedy. But for people who like Chris Tucker, I thought Chris Tucker was phenomenal in Money Talks as well. Rush Hour is not the best comedy trilogy of all time. Rush Hour 3 is the most bonkers Illuminati propaganda I've ever seen. What year was Die Hard 3? Hold on. I want to do Van... Let me do Van Damme first. But Die Hard... Die Hard... With a Vengeance was 95. I'll put it on the list. I mean, that is definitely an action movie. That was pretty solid. Definitely a solid pick. Alright, let's see what's going on with Van Damme. What would we say is Van Damme's last great action movie? Wow, the order was pretty terrible. Replicant was de oh, derailed. I mean, derailed in 2002? Can you say derailed career? <laughs> derailed, derailed uh, Van Damme's career, because that was trash. Although, in hell, the year after, 2003... Actually, it was good. Ringo Lamb movie. Um, Van Damme in prison yet again. I, Death Warrant is obviously better. Wake of Death wasn't terrible either, but then Second in Command 2006 was just sheer garbage. I would say in Inferno was pretty solid in 99, a.k.a. Desert Heat with Van Damme. That one was really good, and he has a great dramatic performance universal soldier to the return in 99 with michael jai white i like that movie everybody hated that movie that was i believe that was his last theatrical release and i saw that in the theater as well legionnaire in 98 was really good knockoff really good 98 double team with dennis rodman i thought was 
incredibly entertaining as well. I was actually, Dennis Rodman's another guy. He went on to do Simon Says or whatever, which was complete trash. But if he got better movies, like Dennis Rodman's another guy, he would have made a great action star. I mean, the guy's what, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, He's got that larger than life thing going on. I mean, he is he is hilarious and charismatic. And he's got the larger-than-life thing going on in real life also. I mean, he would have been a great pick to be a good uh, action star. Man on Fire is a drama. Okay, so... We actually talked... Oh, Breek. We actually talked about Rush Hour 3 with Roman Polanski doing strip searches and all the weird stuff in Rush Hour 3. Not to mention, Rush Hour 3 is just painful to watch. I mean, it's such a terrible movie. I wasn't that big of a fan of Rush Hour 2 either. It was just riding on the coattails of 1. Alright, so what is everybody's pick for Van Damme's last great movie? Maximum Risk 96 is probably the last great one that everybody agrees on, or most Van Damme fans agree on. Because some people don't like Double Team in 97, but Double Team is a great action movie. Also, it's got all the explosions, it's got an island, it's got the spy stuff going on. I mean, Double Team, I would say Double Team is more entertaining than Rush Hour. Call me blast. I mean, I don't know. I'm a big Jackie Chan fan, too, just not of Rush Hour. Jackie Chan himself doesn't like the Rush Hour movies, either. Legionnaire might have been Van Damme's actually best dramatic performance. Legionnaire was phenomenal, 98. But I guess it wasn't really a big action movie, so we might have to go either knockoff. We might have to go knockoff, but knockoff. So knockoff might have been even a Hollywood Hong Kong co production. I mean, that was Sue Hark. Let's see. Is this Hollywood or Hong Kong? So, wow, yeah, it's a co-production. It's a co-production. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we can't even count knockoff. So, <laughs> what does everybody think of Universal Soldier The Return? Van Damme, Michael Jai White, and Bill Goldberg was in the movie as well. Yeah, this is tough. Van Damme is, is tougher to nail down. I mean, Replicant was good in 2001, but The Order and Derailed were really bad. And then In Hell was good, but it was also more on the dramatic side, just like Wake of Death. And then he hasn't really done a big action movie since. JCVD was dramatic. The Eagle Path, which still hasn't been released, he's been working on that movie for over 10 years now. So, I mean, hopefully that'll be good. I mean, everything else he's made has been kind of lackluster. So, I don't know. What are we going to agree on here? We got double team. So, we got Maximum Risk 96. I think everybody agrees that's a solid film. Double team, there's more disagreement, 97. Knockoff, 98. Legionnaire, 99. Universal Soldier, The Return, uh, or Legionnaire, 98. Universal Soldier, The Return, 99. And Inferno, a.k.a. Desert Heat, 99. Replicant 2001. Replicant's also a little bit... It's got the sci-fi vibe. <sighs> okay. And Inferno also wasn't action enough. It's like a dramatic western. So Universal Soldier The Return. I mean, that had jet ski shootout fights. I might have to go with Universal Soldier The Return, even though everybody hates that movie. So I don't know. Are we going to go all the way back to Double Team 97 or Maximum Risk 96? What does everybody think? Yeah, the new kickboxers were good, too. I liked them. But, again, they're more resurgence-type movies. That we, I think part of the reason we like them is because they're not horrible. But, I mean, would you, wouldn't you? would you rather watch the original kickboxer? I mean, <laughs> you know what, Lord said? I haven't seen RoboCop 2014. So, I will put that on the list. All right, well, how, okay. What does everybody think of Van Damme's last great movie? Some people that hate Maxim, they might even say, they might even go all the way back to Time Cop 94. 
Even though I think that's blasphemous. I, th uh, I think Street Fighter 1994 is one of the greatest movies of all time. <laughs> How's that for a mind shock for you guys? Jean-Claude Van Damme, the Frenchman, playing the American hero Guile in, <laughs> in the 1994 Street Fighter movie, in my opinion, is one of the greatest movies of all time. I mean, I don't know how much coke they were all on, but the movie, in my opinion, is highly entertaining. And, of course, Raul Julia. I mean, phenomenal. I mean, I don't know why people hate on that movie. If you're watching the movie for entertainment value, I mean, <laughs> oh, man, I mean, come on. Who wants to go home? Oh, who wants to go with me? <laughs> and let's go take these speedboats to, uh, to Bison's Thailand fortress or whatever. I mean, I think that's one of the greatest movies of all time. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine, like, the sheer entertainment, like, let's just talk entertainment value of Street Fighter the movie 1994. Like, how is that not a fun movie? Like, people love to hate it, but it's so, f it's so much fun. Fun. It's like a larger than life crazy popcorn movie with everybody coked to the gills. I mean, it's just entertainment. <laughs> I mean, you want Hollywood entertainment? That's Hollywood entertainment. <laughs> you got a Frenchman with a thick accent <laughs> playing Guile and giving these motivational speeches. <laughs> I mean, it's just such an incredible movie. I mean, obviously it could have been better, but it was just so cool, especially if if you were young enough to enjoy the Street Fighter video game and then to watch the movie after the video game. I actually thought Mortal Kombat was a cool movie too. I mean, look at the I mean, look at the trash coming out now based on video games and movies and tell me Street Fighter 1994 is not a better movie. I mean, look at the pure garbage coming out now. It's not even entertaining. I mean, it's literally just CGI crap. <laughs> I mean, there's barely any coherency to most of the video game and, and comic book movies coming out now. Okay, so do we have a definitive last great Van Damme movie? I'm going to go with Double Team 97. I'll cut it in the middle. Okay, what was the last great Chuck Norris movie? This might be even tougher to nail down. I, 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 I hate to say this. I mean, this is blasphemy, but I haven't even seen Chuck's last feature film, The Cutter, which he did in 2005. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I don't think... I watched Bells of Innocence either. That was 2003. Check out the plotline of Bells of Innocence. Chuck Norris ventures into the West to stop a horde of ghosts in their deadly path. I mean, if that's not a winning tagline, I don't know what is. I am actually mind-shocked I haven't seen this movie yet. So that was 2003, so he would have already been, I don't know, his late 50s or something by then. He did The President's Man in 2000, which I saw. That was pretty terrible. I hate to hate to say a bad word about Chuck. Actually, Forest Warrior 96 was kind of bad as well. Logan's War Bound by Honor was pretty cool. That was 98. Top Dog 95. And then, oh, we have to go all the way back to Hellbound. We might have to say Hellbound, 1994. <laughs> Who remembers his character's name? I mean, this has got to be one of the greatest names of all time. Bells of Innocence, I am Ion's Cat. How dare you not know? How dare you not have Chuck Norris's filmography committed to memory? How dare you? I mean, is, does anybody, is anybody actually this brazen to show their face in chat without having Chuck Norris's filmography committed to memory. What is going on in the Mind Shock chat? 
Desert Heat was 2001, yeah. It just wasn't a big enough uh, action movie for me, Lord Zed. I enjoyed it tremendously, but I don't think it was big enough. I accept your apology, I Alliance Cat, but don't you ever disrespect Chuck Norris like that again. <laughs> Jamie Barbario says, did anybody mention the Unleashed yet? That's the one starring Jet Li. That was not a Hollywood movie. I believe that was a French movie, actually. Or at least a French co-production. That was pretty good. That was probably Jet Li's last solid movie, because then he did a couple years of garbage, and then he came back with Fearless, which was really good. Yeah, Desert Heat was like, a, was it was a cool Western. It was like a cool Western, like a modern Western. I need to watch it again. I haven't watched it in a while, but I've, I've watched that movie a number of times around the time it came out, and I was thoroughly entertained. Danny Trejo's in that as well. <laughs> but isn't he in everything? Okay, so for Chuck Norris, we're going Hellbound. Does anybody remember his character's name? I forgot, but his name was Frank Shatter. <laughs> his name was Shatter, Mr. Shatter. <laughs> they should have made the tagline when the shat hits the fan. Oh, man. Check out the tagline for... Everybody's seen Hellbound, right? Chuck Norris's 1994 movie. That used to be on TV all the time in the 90s as well. I've seen that movie more times than I, I care to uh, admit. Two Chicago cops investigate a murder until they encounter an ancient demon. I think most of the movie takes place in Jerusalem as well. So are we going Hellbound for Norris? Norris's last good movie, like really solid movie... All right, let's go. What's what's Dolph Lundgren's uh, Dolph Lundgren's last powerhouse movie? Man, he made a lot of movies in the last twenty years, mostly garbage. Kindergarten Cop Two. Anybody see that with Dolph Lundgren? I'd probably be too scared to watch that. Swordfish was a phenomenal film. I wouldn't call that a big-time popcorn action movie, though. John Carpenter's Vampires was an excellent vampire movie. <laughs> That's a great vampire movie. Okay, let's see. Dolph Lundgren. Bridge of Dragons was pretty cool, 99. Sweepers wasn't great, 98. Dominion, 98. Blackjack, 98 was pretty solid. Who here hasn't seen Dolph Lundgren? It, he, a lot of people don't know. John Woo directed Dolph Lundgren in Blackjack 1998. It was a pretty solid movie. It was lower budget than it should have been, but it was good. He did The Peacekeeper before that, which was trash, but Silent Trigger 96 was pretty good. Hidden Assassin was kind of bad in 95, and then... He was in Johnny Mnemonic, 90, 95, Men of War, 94. Pentathlon was kind of weak, 94. Joshua Tree was pretty good, 93. He did Universal Soldier, 92. I, I'll, I'll give him Blackjack, 98. I'll give Lundgren Blackjack, 98. You know, rated on a curve because, you know, Dolph Lundgren's kind of like second tier, no disrespect, but compared to the heavy hitters. So, we have basically a tie between Van Damme's Double Team and Seagal's Fire Down Below 97 for 1997 being the last year of, of great action. Anybody else want to throw any movies in, uh, in the mix here? And then I will reveal which movie killed the action genre. Was that a recent one where it's longer than Van Damme and it's submarine? What's the name of that? Is that Blackwater? 
Yeah, that's Blackwater. I haven't watched that either. 2018. Looks like trash. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's 2018. It looks like complete garbage. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's not entertaining. All right. So who's picking... <laughs> who's picking... Um, supposedly Van Damme was pretty good in Enemies Closer as the bad guy. But I actually couldn't get through that movie. I started watching it. And, and Van Damme's character is cool. But the rest of the movie is so terrible. It is so terrible. Or did I confuse that with Swelter? Wait, I don't even I don't even know. Like around 2013, I kind of stopped. I I'm ashamed to admit it, but I kind of stopped watching Van Damme movies. I have to watch The Bouncer though. Supposedly The Bouncer from a number of years back, that might have also been around 2018 is supposedly pretty good. Actually, have you guys seen the trailer for Bloodsport 2? All right, I got to put this up on a screen because this is fun this is this is amazing. This is better than all of Van Damme's recent movies combined. We're probably going to get copyright hit, but it's worth it. It's worth it for this one. <laughs> One second. I'll have it up in one second. <laughs> Nineteen seventy nine. The Warriors. Uh, yeah, kinda. But that's seventy nine. So clearly, <laughs> there were a lot of great movies after that. <laughs> the Warriors is cool. I like the vibe. Like that's another thing too. Like modern movies, they just can't capture those vibes. That, uh, well, Warriors was 79, but, you know, even 70s, 80s, 90s movies, they just have phenomenal vibes and atmospheres. It's like, atmosphere has been forsaken for CGI. Alright, get ready. This is going to be the best trailer anybody's ever seen. This is probably the greatest movie trailer in the history of modern movie trailers. If you haven't checked out the podcast on the greatest movie trailer of all time, not just modern, check it out. Spoiler alert, it's Bruce Lee fights back from the grave. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hope you guys are sitting down. There's this tournament. It's a big tournament. I'm retired. 47 years later, we're still talking about him. So why do you think he's been able to stand the test of time? He's a man of honor. Respectable. Then they themselves just bullshitted everything and moved everything around, and only the strong survive. I happen to know for a fact that Dukes is telling the truth. 24 years. Why? No next. Who is the next? Nobody. They've been asking me the same question for the last 25 years. Shidoshi? I have poured all my knowledge into you. When you fight, my spirit fight with you. I start to believe in destiny more than anything else. So this is going to be our, our best shot. So I can show Hollywood that it's over. I cannot lose the fight. I'm a champion. They should have really made that movie. <laughs> How good of a trailer was that? They should have really made the movie. Let's see what year that trailer came out. Let's 
So, wow, they made that trailer two years ago, so pretty recent. So, they are making The Last Kumite, another movie with Bolo Young's son, but Van Damme declined. Oh, I don't know if they even asked him to be in it. But they have a lot of old action stars in it, like Billy Blanks. We forgot Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks was awesome. Late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, no, that was a fan trailer. They should have really made it, though. Would have been cool. Yeah, Bolo's awesome. So, okay. So, do we have a consensus here on the last great action movie? It's tough. So Arnold is True Lies 94. Stallone is Assassins 95. Seagal's either 97, Fire Down Below, or Exit Wounds 2001. If we go with Exit Wounds 2001, I mean, that would be generous, but we could. Then we have, so The Matrix was 99, which kind of almost transformed the genre. But I think we're ready. I think everybody's ready for me to actually reveal what destroyed 80s and 90s action movies. Are we all ready? I think everybody's ready. I'll put it up on the screen in a second. This movie single-handedly destroyed the entire popcorn action movie genre. I don't know how many of you are going to be surprised. I don't know how many of you will think I'm blaspheming. But here it is. The Born Identity. Two thousand two. So the reason the Born Identity destroyed the action movie. Now it was partially the Matrix as well. Because the Matrix shift into sci-fi and CGI was kind of like the beginning of the end. And then the born identity was the nail in the coffin. So between Matrix 99 and born identity 2002, this was the massive decline. And of course, all the other guys kind of got old. Not that there's a specific age limit, but the born identity. So you have Matt Damon who is by no means a larger-than-life action star. Because this is also connected to the other reasons. So I was going to give the movie that spelled the beginning and the end, and then the other main reason is widespread internet, social media, and the ability to interact with a lot of the actors, although that doesn't immediately mean, you know, beginning of the end. Let's like look at the Undertaker who never broke character until the past few years. So post social media, the Undertaker of the WWE or WWF, however you want to call it, he still didn't break character. So it's not that it was impossible post social media, but these are all the ingredients. These are all the main factors. When you have a guy like Matt Damon, a non action movie star. The, the other big shift was in the camera work for the action scenes in Born Identity. It kind of shifted to this military grade and super shaky camera work where everything zoomed in, you can't see what's going on, and it's very confusing. Which, on one hand, is kind of cool because it it, it's almost like you got thrown in the action. But on the other hand, now you don't actually need these larger-than-life guys to do any of the action. Because you have CG, and then you have you can just do these shaky camera work where 
You don't actually need Matt Damon to know what he's doing. Now, I'm sure he trained whatever he trained for the role, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, he, the, the believability is not there. Matt Damon is not a super powerhouse. Although, in the last Bourne movie, he did get really, really jacked. And I would say he had a chance, if he was in, if he looked like he did in Bourne 4, as he, in Jason Bourne, as he did in the first Bourne identity, he maybe could have made it work a little bit, but that's not what happened. Because in the first Bourne identity, he's not jacked at all. He's an everyman. He's Joe Schmo down the street. Now, I'm not going to accuse him of being in the cesspool of soy, because that's still 2002. I'm not saying he was high in soy, although maybe he is, I don't know. But, <laughs> like the other guys, but the camera work and the CG basically rendered the real action movie star obsolete. That's what happened. Hello, Cammy. We were just talking about how awesome Street Fighter 1994, the movie, was. Cammy was kind of awesome in that movie, too. <laughs> you have an Australian playing Cammy and a, fr and a Belgian-French guy playing, uh, playing Guile. It's hilarious. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point, Jamie Barbario. That's actually a good point, too, even though it came out later. Yeah, I mean, it, Transformers plus all the comic book superhero movies, I mean, those were just the final nails in the coffin. But even if those never came out, as soon as Bourne came out, see, Matrix by itself was not the beginning of the end. It was the, it was the beginning of the end in terms of non-CG movies. But if Born Identity hadn't come out, because what is the aftermath of Born Identity? Now, to be clear, I like Born Identity. I think it's an excellent spy movie. I think it's excellent. I like all of them. Okay? I haven't watched the series, though. I like all of the Born Identity movies, but they killed the genre because they rendered the larger-than-life movie hero obsolete. Now it didn't help that all these older that all these big stars kind of got really old and the budgets got smaller because those movies just weren't in anymore because you can have any everyday guy like Matt Damon I mean just just look at these uh look at these soy goofs here You could have any of these guys whether they're jacked whether they're not jacked whatever you can basically have anybody be an action star now. So it lost literally all of its larger-than-life appeal. Similarly, not unlike pro wrestling, right? Because when they took the... It wasn't just the anti-steroid stance. Obviously, some of the guys are still juiced. But when all of these guys look like normal guys off the street... I mean, you're watching movies for entertainment and escapism. You know, watching guys, average goofs off the street, like, you know, all these soy boys and metrosexual cross-dressers, I mean, you know, there, there's just, that, that's not real entertainment value for the people that enjoyed the heyday of action movies. Yeah, The Matrix, I mean, it was Matrix 2 born. it was The Matrix and The Born Identity. So the Matrix kind of sort of spelled Doom. It could have still been saved. But as soon as Born Identity came out, there was no going back. Because now you can have any guy off the street with the CG and the super close-up shaky camera work to make it look like they know what they're doing. It's over. I mean, it's completely over. <laughs> And then obviously the woke, you know, the woke mind virus and the woke agenda, you know, they they wove that into superhero movies and and all big budget movies. So then there was no even the though the older guys like Stallone can still make good movies, but he's not necessarily going to be getting the biggest budgets. I mean, Expendables was kind of cool. It was a good throwback, you know. It was like the last hurrah, so to speak. For, for the old style action movies. And they still weren't that good. They threw in too much new blood. And you know these young people. They just they should have just stuck to the older guys. It would have been better. 
like in the first Expendables for the most part. So that's my take, you know, from the CGI of the Matrix and everything that came after to the to to rendering larger than life stars obsolete to social media because look at these guys. Look at the screen right now. These scrawny soy goofs. I mean, Jason Jason Statham is probably the only guy that can maybe have done a decent job. But he just didn't, it was also budgets. Like, the budget, it just wasn't in anymore. Like, the Transporter movies were okay, but they don't compare to the old Arnold Stallone's Van Damme Seagal's. Because Jason Statham, like, he's not even a real martial artist. He did, like, McDojo stuff when he was a kid. And then he just trained specifically for the Transporter. Matthew Knight, I actually picked True Lies as uh, Arnold's last great action movie in terms of entertainment value. I mean, it had all the explosions, the one-liners, the fun. But here's the other issue is outside of the movie, like, these guys are all goofs. I mean, Keanu Reeves is probably pretty cool. But he's this scrawny guy. He's not an Arnold, a Stallone, a Van Damme. Like, Seagal was never jacked, but, you know, he might have actually been in the CIA. I'll be doing a extensive Steven Seagal podcast series uh, shortly, almost done prepping that. Whether he was or wasn't in the CIA, he had that mystery, that allure. I mean, he kind of still does. I mean, he's training Alex Pereira now. Like, what is going on? <laughs> He still kind of sort of has that mystique. What mystique does Chris Evans have? What mystique does Tom Holland have? What mystique does John Cena have? These guys are goofs. Nobody's going to believe that they can take on, you know, multiple opponents at the same time. <laughs> How dare you, Phoenix 2181. Last Action Hero was a phenomenal film. How dare you, blasphemers. We got some blasphemers in the chat. Cammy liked Kill Bill Volume 2. The reason I don't include the Kill Bills is because Tarantino's a hack, and he just copied it literally shot for shot. He got sued for a lot of movies, so we went over this on, uh, I think, Maxwell Powers' Greatest Movies of All Time list. Uh, with Maxwell and JR, we went over how Tarantino is a complete hack. Jamie says, I think Enemy of the State, that might, that's one of my favorite Will Smith movies, and, and movies in general, because the, the, just how it predicted everything. Enemy of the State is underrated as all heck. Training Day was pretty solid, too. Both of them are more dramas than action movies, though. Like, when I say action movie, I mean big action explosions and shootouts all over the place. There's, you know, there's there's primarily action movies and then there's dramas with action. <laughs> I mean, Tom Holland looks like Kristen Stewart half the time. I mean, look at, the sc look at the image on the screen right now. I mean, he's short. He's got a lot of soy. I mean, there's just nothing... There's no mystique. There's no larger-than-life superhero character. I mean, he's got witty one-liners. That's all he's got, and he's got the CG. That's it, the CGI. That does not make a legit action movie hero. And those days are now gone. And as Lord Zed pointed out, Jason Momoa was probably the last great hope. Because Bullet in the Head, like, he came on the action movie scene hard with that. You know, from Baywatch Hawaii to co-starring with Stallone. <laughs> so that's my take. That's, that's all I got for you guys. From The Matrix to Born Identity and social media and the woke mind virus that Hollywood is pushing as the whore of Babylon. If you haven't checked out The Greatest Conspiracy Song, uh, Californication, where I postulate, I'll be doing a part two because that stream got cut off for policy violations. I appealed them, and apparently it worked. The stream's back up, but it's still hit with copyright for some reason, so there's, I don't know, multiple violations, whatever. But, yeah, part two will be coming where I will examine the Red Hot Chili Peppers more. But that's pretty much what happened. 
And the fallout is, back in the 80s and 90s, there was also a certain optimism that doesn't quite exist post-2001. And definitely not post, you know, 2012 was the huge shift. So, you know, between the masculinity, the clear sign of good and evil, fighting statism, like with all the woke nonsense, I mean, there's so much statist propaganda in Hollywood movies, whereas in the 80s and 90s were... They were anti-commie, anti-statist, but now everything's like pro-commie, pro-socialist propaganda in all the movies. So all of these huge shifts all play a role because it's almost like there's no room for the larger-than-life action star. Yeah, I'll be getting into, I'll be doing another podcast on Asian action movies. Yeah, the Police Story series is absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't checked out Dragons Forever, that was Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung Yen Biao, the three brothers film. Dragons Forever was, I can comfortably say, without thinking about it too much, that Dragons Forever, it was either 87 or 88. Is that 88, maybe? I think that's actually out on 4K Blu-ray. Dragons Forever was 88. That was the last great... Hong Kong action film. I mean, there were some really good ones after, but that was the that was the pinnacle, in my opinion. The fight scenes were just absolutely phenomenal in that movie. For gunplay films, it would pr hard boiled was probably the pinnacle. John Woo, Chow Yun Fat. I don't think any movie has captured uh, shootouts better than Hard Boiled. But that's a topic for another podcast. Here we're discussing the Hollywood larger-than-life action stars. Yeah, I mean, Momoa is still not that old, but if he keeps doing those those Disney comic book movies, I mean, there's they should do Bullet in the Head, too. <laughs> I mean, they should have made... Momoa needs some kind of, like, gritty, hardcore action franchise. You know? And not a reboot. Like Lethal Weapon. I think they're actually doing one more Lethal Weapon as well. I mean, that's the other issue. They're kind of trying to recapture old glory when in the 80s and 90s, they were original movies. Like, they were starting franchises, not rebooting them. That's another component we didn't really touch upon, which is all, which also, I believe, is uh, very critical to the decline of action movies. And I, bl I blame, like, even, like, Jason Statham. I'm putting the blame on him. He could have got more jacked. He could have made better selections in his movies. He could have demanded more fight scene, shootout-centered, hardcore action movies. Plenty of guys around to make that happen. Because even Extraction falls flat because it doesn't have the larger... Because Hemsworth doesn't have the larger-than-life star power. He doesn't have the charisma. So even though the action is pretty good, the shootout, the, that's the other thing too, like they substituted the raw charisma for technical aspects, you know, for smoother camera work, for fancier camera work and more CGI. Tony Jaa, we didn't really, I mean, going outside of Hollywood, Tony Jaa with Ong Bak in 2000, was that 2003 maybe, 2003, 2004? That was two, that was two thousand four, I believe. Or was it two thousand three? <laughs> two thousand three. It was two thousand three. It might it might have taken a year to get stateside, but I was actually at that premiere in L.A. Actually, for Ongbak. <laughs> Tony Jaa did some cool demos. So, yeah. He probably was the last shot at rebooting. And then also you have the Fast and the Furious films, which, you know, the first, second, and third one were kind of car movies. And then they moved into the action franchise. So they kind of took the place. So it's basically satire at this point. They took the place of legit action movies. So there's, it's almost like there's no room for legit action movies anymore. <laughs> I was never a Michael Keaton fan. I always thought Keaton was very dry. 
Kind of like Costner. Although I prefer to Costner over Caton. I mean, here's the, the one thing I will say. Basically, Tom Cruise... Tom Cruise is very interesting. I'm also going to be doing a dedicated Tom Cruise podcast with all of the Scientology and Illuminati <laughs> aspects. But Tom Cruise is interesting because he's like the last great Hollywood star. Not specifically an action star. Although he did some big action movies and even some recent ones that were kind of underrated, like Night and Day. I mean, I'm not a big Cameron Diaz fan, but that movie was decent. And so Tom Cruise with his Mission Impossible franchise, that's probably the last great franchise that's still going, I would say. Because it's, it's based on practical offense, uh, effects, not CGI. And Tom Cruise does have a certain amount of star power. The problem is he's not this larger-than-life action star. See, the guy that played Jack Reacher in the Jack Reacher series, obviously Tom Cruise played Jack Reacher as well, that guy, I forgot his name, he could have possibly started, you know, resurging the action movie franchise, but the problem is, I don't know if he's woke or whatever, but he's just not gritty enough. You know, he's he's like he's almost like an intentionally neutered version of an action movie star. Like can you imagine how bland the Jack Reacher TV actor would be if that came out in the 80s? It's, he's just not that exciting. Like, where, where's the charisma and the star power? Like, Arnold, Stallone, and Van Damme would run circles around a guy like that. Cammy, from a dramatic point of view, I totally understand that. I like his older movies, too, from a dramatic acting point of view. But from an action point of view, he actually does the stunts himself for the most part. And their practical offense, uh, effects. He doesn't lean on CGI. I'm sure there's a bunch of... I mean, I, I don't know if they're claiming there's no CGI. Obviously, there is. But he's still really doing the stunt. Yeah, the guy from Amazon. But, I mean, the guy, he just doesn't have star power. I mean, he's got a little bit of charisma. But again, can you imagine if that series came out in the 80s? Nobody would even watch it. Nobody would bat an eye. It's just not exciting. Like, there's no excitement factor. There's also a certain level of danger. There's one more component that I missed, which you just reminded me of. Like when Stallone and Arnold and Van Damme are jumping from explosions and, and, and doing all these big stunts, they're literally risking their life, and this is pre-CGI. I mean, obviously they had projection effects and stuff, but most of the time they didn't use them. They really blew stuff up. Now they don't. So that element of danger, like, it really helped with the willing suspension of disbelief. Tom Cruise got legit. Like, he actually put in the work. Like, I have to respect Tom Cruise. The guy who's a multimillionaire, he has nothing to gain and everything to lose from doing these stunts himself. Like, he is legit now. He definitely wasn't before. Like, he wasn't legit in Mission Impossible 1. I, do, I didn't really buy those fight scenes in Mission Impossible 1 either. But I would say for Mission Impossible 2, he, by, by Mission Impossible 2, he got really serious. Like, the Mission Impossible 2 fight scenes, I buy those. Mission Impossible 2 and onward. But any Mission Impossible 1 and prior, I, I don't buy any of those, any Tom Cruise fight scenes before then. But he put in the work. I mean, he put in the work. Kind of like... Kind of like Kiana did. I don't buy Kiana's fight scenes either. But his his tactical training with firearms is pretty legit if you watch the behind the scenes. Like Kiana can actually do those SWAT courses and uh, the special forces courses. He actually can get really good times and high marks in those courses. Yeah, Tom. well yeah, Tom Cruise isn't larger than live. He is not. You know, but to be fair, there are some legit CIA agents who are 5'7 who can totally wreck a lot of guys at the same time. So, yeah, no, as far as, as, far as larger-than-life action stars, Tom Cruise doesn't quite cut it, but he's the last one maintaining a legit action movie franchise. Like, for example, Fast and Furious is not a legit action movie franchise, just for comparison. There is literally no other. I mean, even the Expendables fell off with the last entry. It was just garbage. 
So the Mission Impossible movies, the last Mission Impossible had one of the best train sequences I've ever seen. I mean, he really ups the ante. Like, he gets the excitement going in the set pieces, not due to himself, because, again, he himself is not a major... He's, he's not a major action... He's not a larger-than-life action movie star. But the movies are legit action movies based on the action set pieces. So... Yeah, I mean, it's re- and he, he captures a lot of it wide. I mean, he's really carrying the torch. Even though Top Gun Maverick wasn't even specifically an action movie, it kind of was. I mean, it didn't really have, you know, big shootouts and, and gunfights. But it did have, you know, dogfights in the sky. So it was pretty cool. He's carrying the torch. I mean, when Tom Cruise retires, it's going to be all over. There's literally nobody left. All of these guys sold out. So unless some new people come up, because even the technical guys with the martial arts, like the, the, the team for Extraction is pretty good, and the John Wick teams, they're good, but those movies just don't have the excitement, the larger-than-life excitement factor. The closest would be the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible movies, and again, you're not getting excited because of Tom Cruise, you're getting excited for the set pieces in the movie. Yeah, I was not really impressed with Myers. Lord Zed mentioned Jonathan Reese Myers. I mean, they have to have off the charts charisma. Like, there's something about Arnold. I guess you could say it's correlated to testosterone levels, possibly, and they've been plummeting. So even guys like The Rock, who are and John Cena, who are juiced to the gills, they're just goofs in terms of personality. I mean, these guys are goofs. Like, you can't respect a goof as an action movie star. I mean, even Chris Evans is less of a goof than John Cena or The Rock. But he doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have real charisma star power either. I mean, I actually liked his performances in the Captain America movies, you know, in the Marvel movies, but again, he's not a legit larger-than-life action movie star, and those movies are all CG. There's no real element of risk which drops the excitement factor exponentially. So, you know, that's all we got. I mean, the John Wick movies are cool, but, I, but again, there's, it, it's all technical, and it's almost like there's no real soul driving the excitement. Whereas the 80s and 90s action movies, there's something very real about them, not digital. Maybe, I mean, obviously the fact that they were literally shot on analog film helps. But, I mean, you could replicate that with modern movies. I, I, I think the digital look also is responsible for taking people out of the movie. Because, I mean, call me crazy, but it's just a lot easier to get lost in an, a movie shot organically on film than it is in a movie shot digitally with CGI. Although, I will say 300 is probably the best digital movie that you can maybe get lost in, but that's about it. Heracles says, I have some faith in the red-pilled young kids coming up. It may be a few more years before the pendulum swings back, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think we might be due for another reset, and we're going back to scratch, so the movie industry won't be restarted for another century. But maybe when it is, it'll be another good cycle. So <laughs> so that's it for now. I will actually be back later tonight for our live Q&A where I hope everybody watches the game to get caught up. We'll be talking the game and and plenty more uh, in about 90 minutes or so. So I hope everybody enjoyed another edition of the Mind Shock podcast and going over the death of the action movie. If you want to help support the podcast, you can donate to our PayPal. Just check the link in the description. You can also become a YouTube member right here on YouTube. Like and share Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. If you're not getting notifications, just like and comment on more videos. Or you can just go to youtube.com slash mindshock. This is Bruce McGuire signing off. Catch you guys next time.